one of the phrases I consider simple but profound is God help me. I've used it over time in my life and it has worked. In today's video, I want to speak on the topic, you can ask God for help. Sometimes you could feel like, I don't want to disturb God. I don't want to bother God with this. This is too small. I can handle this. And I want to tell you why you should not have that mindset because God wants you to ask him for help. Number one, when you ask God for help, you honor God. It is such a great honor to God that you ask him for help. Now, that could sound strange to you. How is it an honor to God that I'm asking something from him? Now, that is the difference between you and God. Because he is God, he is the creator, he is a provider, and his work is to provide. By the time you can tap from him, you are making him feel like God. It is only man that is exhaustible. And I don't want to get ahead of myself. The other points that I want to share. but once you know that God is inexhaustible, once you know God is excellent, once you know that God is all-powerful, that he has everything, when you take from him, it means you are recognizing him. It means you are honoring who he is. You are telling him, I know who you are. I know you have everything. I know you can do everything. And when you go to him to ask for help, it is an honor. Scriptures in Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very ready help in trouble. Now, if scripture says that God is a very ready help in trouble, what happens when you get in trouble or when you need help in whatever situation as for protection, for provision, or whatever thing that you need help in, and you know that you have a God who is a very ready help and you don't go to him instead you're looking for other means to solve your issue first it's a dishonor to god but it will be a great honor that when you get in trouble your first response is to run to god your first thing yeah you can call it quick response your quick response or your go-to would be god help me and i recall in my life when i was struggling with addiction addiction to masturbation which I will share that story one day, someday. I sometimes, when the struggle, when I'm in the midst of it, when I tell God, help me, I would just find his help, like right there, readily there, I would find the help. But at other times, when I'm trying to use my own human you know, ability, the willpower, I would find myself falling into that temptation woefully. And I've realized that asking God for help it is an honor to him. And if all of us can get to a point of recognizing that and knowing that, you would get to do something that delights God. Because it delights him when you go to him to ask of him. Just like a father who can provide for his child and the child does not go to him to ask for help, you're making your father feel incapacitated. Now, when you can be free to ask God for help, you're doing what the scripture actually says acknowledge god in all your ways it is as if you are saying to god god i honor you i know this could sound so strange but then it is true since he is god he has everything he's all powerful the best thing you can do to make him feel like god is take from him and take some more from him and receive from him you find in the scriptures that it's full of people who needed god's help when they could take this help from god God would delight in them. God would be happy that these people can come to him. They can trust him. Because you don't have to consider the human perspective whereby you feel like ah, if, if you were to ask a human being something and you keep on disturbing them over time, they would be fed up with you. They'll be like, this guy would not let me rest. Sometimes you, you call them, they don't, they don't want to pick your call. They'll be like, I'm not going to pick this call today because I know what is coming. They are coming to ask for help. And to that point, you have to know that God is not man. And furthermore, as a child of God, every time you go to your father, even your worship to him is a cry for help. Because it is actually you recognizing, God, you are the greatest. I recognize you're worthy. I recognize you're faithful. I recognize who you are. So it's still a means of honor to God. As if it's a cry for help. You don't necessarily need to start 
mentioning things you need to God, which you should, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Your worship to God is also a cry for help because by the time you worship him, magnifying him in your situation, making your situation a way of how great your God is, it's like you are inviting God into that situation. And scripture says of your God that he never slumbers, neither does he sleep. He is never tired. He is not overwhelmed or overcrowded. Oh, so many people are praying. So many people are asking. He's not. Scriptures in Psalm 1 to 1 says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from the help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The next point, when you ask God for help, it is a sign of humility. I know you would never consider humility to sound like I'm asking God for help. But you have to realize and recognize that the human condition is you feeling like I am okay by myself. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anybody. And I really wish that you get this revelation that it is a sign of humility when you go to God and ask him for help and cast your case to him and present your request to him and put your heart at bear. Now, a person that has pride would not know how to ask for help. Neither would they know how to receive help because they feel like they would have you know, been able to be all in all to themselves. But when you come to know that as a human being, when it has to do with your relationship with God, that you were made to be dependent. The fish is dependent on the water. It's its natural habitat. It can live outside of the water. Same thing with every other creature. God made them and from where God called them out, their habitat is where they can survive, where they can thrive. Now, as humans, we were called out of God. We were made in the image of God. He breathed his breath inside of us. So we cannot even be independent. We are not an entity. We can only find our identity in the one who made us. And from the one we come from. So whenever you come to a place of pride. Oh, I don't want to go and disturb God or bother God. You know, that's pride. But when you know, when I'm in need, I have a father. I have someone who is like a friend. That is my provider. Is my source. He is also the one who, res who resources me. Is my resource also. He's everything to me. That revelation will get you to live and thrive. Because it is a place of recognizing. I will ask God of help whenever I am in need. And it's a thing. Or a sign of humility. And it's the posture of you saying, God, I need you. I cannot do this life without you. Outside of you, I am nothing. Like Jesus said in John chapter 15, without me, you can do nothing. And we can think, oh, no, it's spiritual. It was talking about spiritual things. No, nothing is nothing. Both physical, mental, whatsoever. It's, you can do nothing without him. It's humility when I go to God to ask him of help because he is a speedily ready help every time. So with this, I would like you to take a moment, pause and ask God for help. Honor him and humble yourself before him. Scripture says in Chronicles, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, that's the first thing, and seek my face. Now, it means you have to take a posture of humility before you can seek God. Because it, is, it shows that when people do not seek God, they are not humble. When people do not ask God for help, they are not humble. When people do not go to God in their time of trouble, they are not humble. They are proud. Wow. First Peter, Peter explained this in First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. He says, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Now, I want you to see something from this passage before you gloss over it, because you've been quoting it over time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will raise you. And then the next verse, it says, it tells you how to humble yourself. How do you humble yourself under the mighty hands of God? It is by casting all your worries. To God, that is humility when you can ask God for help. When you seek God's face, it is humility. It is you knowing, I can't do without God. 
I cannot do it alone. But the pride of our humanity would make us tell God, I'll make it up to you. Even when you're trying to live right and honor God, can you make it up to him? Like really, you cannot make it up to him on your own. That is why you need the help of the Spirit. That is why you need him to be able to do the things you want to do for him. Because he never told you, go and do all these things and let me prove you to see if you can do it without me. That's not the posture. That is not God's position with us. It's not like I'm going to prove you to see if you have strength. He knows we don't. He knows we are weak. We are frail. So why would you assume this pride and ego as if you can do without him? Or maybe you are someone that says, no, this is a small thing now. I shouldn't bother God with this one. It's something that I can handle. But does it bother you? If it bothers you, then it bothers God. Why? Because scripture says that God cares for you. Imagine you care for someone and you see them struggling and you know you can help them. And then they are like, I don't need you. That's an insult. That's a dishonor to you. They know you can help them and you know you can help them. But they are like, no, I want to do this one on my own. I want to try it on my own. Because you care, it hurts you to see them struggle when you know you can help. Most times that's the position we put God because we do not give him permission to help us. We are like, we can do it on our own. So we don't go to him for help. And that is why we don't receive help from him. And what a sad place to be. So all I'm saying here is, I'm encouraging you to come to grabs with the revelation that when you ask of help from God, you are honoring God and you are humbling yourself before God. It is humility to God. The next point, when you ask God for help, it means you trust God. Now, you will not even go to someone you do not trust or know that has the capacity or the ability to help you to ask them for help. That would be mockery. Like, <laughs> for example, naturally, you look at how somebody, if you want to ask someone for help, you look at how they live, how they dress, you want to weigh them by how you see them to know if you can trust them to ask what you want to ask. Because it would be mockery that, you know, you dress better than someone and you go to that person and be like, can you help me with this amount or can you help me with this? You yourself would even tell yourself, he's like, I'm even doing better than this person. They would need my help. So it would sound like mockery on the human side horizontally to even think about going to someone you don't trust can help you to ask for help. Now, that's as humans. To God, if you do not trust God, you cannot ask him for help. And that is the position that I feel like a lot of Christians are. That is the position I feel like a lot of Christians are in because we don't go to God to ask him for help because we do not trust him. Now, even when scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We don't even trust. So that's why we cannot like acknowledge him in all our ways. We cannot ask him for the help we need because we are like, well, I don't really think I need to ask God of this. Let me try it out first. And it's until something goes wrong before we realize that, oh, I should have asked God. And God doesn't want you to be in that place whereby you keep making mistakes and after you make mistakes, you refer back to him. He wants to come first, prioritize him first, trust in him. And that is learn how to ask him of help. Learn how to ask him of direction when you need one. You want to go into a relationship, you want to do a business, you want to sign a contract, ask him for help and direction. You're choosing a career path, ask him for help and direction. You have to humble yourself to do that. Of course, accept the fact that you don't know everything. Of course, you don't even know anything when it comes to God. He knows everything. He knows what is best for you. Now, there's a story in Second Chronicles chapters 14 to 16 about a king called Esa. And I'm not saying Esa, <laughs> like Esa, A-S-A. So Esa was a king in Judah or the king of Judah in that particular passage. And scripture says that he had peace in his kingdom. Why? Because he trusted God and did what was right in the sight of God. At a certain point, there was an Ethiopian man who came with one million men to fight him. 
And because he trusted God, he went to God in prayer. And this was the words he used in his prayer. Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God, O Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord our God, for we trust in you alone. It is in your name that we have come against this vast hurt. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. I want you to see from this passage the correlation that he puts between God's help and him trusting. He says, God, we need your help because it's you alone we trust. Now, it is to prove to you and point you to the fact that every time you ask God of help, it shows where your trust is in. If you are genuine, you really trust God, you will always ask him to help you whenever you are in trouble. Now, Asa did this in the early stage of his life and everything went smooth for him. His kingdom was peaceful and God helped them. But at a certain point, as he was growing old and after serving for a number of years as the king of Judah, he did not trust God again. And watch what happened in chapter 16. He went ahead to put his trust on mere men. Like when a war came, the king of Israel started a war against him. He went to meet another king to ask for the king's help. But he forgot that the God who helped him fight and win against one million men can do more. And, and, and I want you to pause here and think about your life. Has God ever come true for you? Like has God ever done something? For you, has he been faithful? If he has been faithful, then why would you not trust him now in what you are going through to know that he can help? Why would you not ask him of help now? And that was the place that Asa failed. Because at this point, when he, he took his trust to the other king, God sent a prophet to him and the prophet told him, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What a fool you have been. From now on, you will have war. Now, it is a sad place because you've always been trusting God and asking him for help when you have trouble. What happened? And scripture says, God called him, what a, what a fool you are. It, it is just showing us that whenever we don't trust God, we are foolish. I'm not the one that said it, actually. Scripture says it. When you cannot trust God and ask him for help, it is just showing the extent to how foolish you are and how foolish you can get. Because, you know, it's only God that can help you. So why can't you trust him? Now, it went bad because Asa developed this pride at this point that even when he got sick, he could not trust God or ask God for help. And all God wants you to do, no matter your position with him, he just wants you to ask for help. Even the worst sinner, the day the person opens his or her mouth and tells God, God help me, God will help the person. Blind Bartimaeus, when Jesus was passing, was yelling and shouting Jesus' name. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was shouting. The people told him, come on, shut up. Who are you? Keep quiet. And then the guy was still shouting. And Jesus stopped in his track and asked him, what do you need? And he healed him of his blindness. Now, it is to show you there should not be anything like pride in you to ask of help from God. Drop the pride and know that when, when I ask of help from God, it shows I trust God. To so God, that is trust. That is faith. Now, let me read that portion where Asa fell sick and he could not recognize God. Scripture says, in the 39th year of his reign, talking about Asa, Asa developed a serious foot disease. Yet, even with the severity of his disease, he did not seek the Lord's help, but turned only to his physicians. Now, such a bad place. Someone that was once trusting God, asking for God's help, and saw God's faithfulness, he now re re retracted to a place whereby he developed pride. He would not ask God for help. And I pray that we would not be such people who would come to a place that we feel like we don't need God in our lives. That the doctors that we have can, can do the work. That the money we have can do the work. That the resources we've been able to gather can do the work. And we start trusting in our resources, in 
the relationships we have, you know, the links and whatever you call it. I pray we don't get to that place. I pray you don't get to become that person. I pray I don't get to become that person that when God makes me amass resources, I won't come to a place of starting to trust my resource instead of trusting the God who is my source. Now, Asa could not trust God to heal him and he died. Foolishness. Don't be foolish. Learn how to ask God for help. Learn how to trust God. The last point I want to share is when you ask God for help, you are saying that God is inexhaustible. You are recognizing that he is powerful. And of course, in all of scripture, you see how powerful God is, the things that he has done, the ways he has made, doors he has opened for people. And you realize that he is the all-powerful God. Scriptures and Ephesians says that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all you and I can ever ask, think, or imagine. Now, this is for you to know. God is inexhaustible. His supply of help to us is inexhaustible. So what more can we do than to ask more of him and take more from him? Instead of trying to feel like we can do something for God. No, we can't do anything for God. Everything we do in this part of heaven under the sun that we feel like we are doing for God is not actually for God. We are doing it for ourselves. The prayer we pray, the fasting we fast, is all for our good. Everything, the service we render to people, it's all for our good. Because when we are generous, there's a blessing for us even being generous to people. There's a blessing for us loving people. Like it's all for our good. We have to come to a place that God doesn't need your help. God does not need you to be God. But you need him to be a man. You need him to survive. You need him to thrive. You need him to succeed. Even the worst sinner needs God. They know deep within, they know that no matter the resource they can get or whatever they can do, there is a hole that they feel inside of them that nothing can fill that hole. And that is the God hole. So they, they have this knowledge that there was a deity, there was a God. And you have come to know the truth and know this true and living God, the only wise one. Why would you not ask him of help? If he's the only wise one and you're confused, what best would you do as a wise person? Would it not be to go to the only wise one and ask him, I need help, I need wisdom, I need direction. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So I want you to get this revelation that every time you come to God and ask him for help, first of all, you are honoring God. Secondly, it is a posture of humility. Thirdly, you are trusting God. And lastly, you are telling God you have an exhaustible supply. I recognize who you are. You are God. So in conclusion, you have to know that the lesser is always blessed by the greater. And God is the greater in this unit of relationship that we have with him. And once you recognize he's the greater, the best thing for you to do is get under him and get blessed. I hope this video is productive and valuable to you. Let me know in the comment section what you've learned from this video and how it has been of help to you. And share your experiences when you've asked God for help. You may not even have been serious, but you've told God. God help me. You were in trouble and you just shouted, God help me. And God came through. So if you could come through when you were not even serious, what happens when you are taking it intentionally? Share your story in the comment section and let me know what experiences you've had. And I believe this video is beneficial. If it is, share it to other people. Click the share button. Give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I am Uwe This is my YouTube channel. Do well to follow. Up and check my other videos that I have done. Watch the next video also. And thank you. See you in my next video. Bye bye.